Hello there, Matt Stevens here from the Hawk Conservancy Trust. Today I'm going to give you a little bit more information about some research we published earlier this year. This work was focused on estimating the population size of buzzards and red kites across a 2,500 square kilometre study area of central southern England, mostly within Hampshire but also covering adjacent areas of West Sussex, Surrey and Berkshire. Oh, and Wiltshire as well. Sorry, Wiltshire. Um, this was between 2011 and 2016. The interesting thing from this work is that although it showed buzzards and red kite numbers to have increased, which we're all pretty much aware of anyway, because anybody wandering about in Hampshire and adjacent counties will probably see red kites and buzzards rel relatively frequently. It's more about how that rate of growth changed over time. During the first three years, the estimated rate of growth was quite high. The graph was quite steep and numbers are increasing quite rapidly. But during the last two years, that slowed. So what could have caused that slowing of the rate of growth? Well, as we see it, there are really three categories of options. Firstly, could have been to do with the study. How was it designed or carried out? Secondly, was there some change in the environment? Was there a difference in food availability or habitat change between those years? And thirdly, could there have been human effects? Well, as far as the study is concerned, well, it was carefully designed and it seemed to go quite well for the first three years, so it seems unlikely that it would have changed dramatically during the second or the last two years. What about the environment and habitat change? Well, could there have been more disturbance, fewer nesting sites or suitable places to find food? Mm, it seems unlikely that it would change so rapidly. Occasionally, there are crashes in populations of preferred prey items or prey species, such as small mammals, that things like buzzards and red kites will feed on. Um, and 2013 was a year when that happened. But you'd expect it to recover, and it did recover as far as um, the number of those species is concerned in subsequent years. So that shouldn't have been an issue. Perhaps climate was an issue. Perhaps poor weather during the breeding season led to reduced nesting success and fewer birds available to count. Or perhaps overwinter survival was difficult. Checking back through the data though suggests that none of these were issues, were significant issues during the study period. There have been suggestions that maybe increasing COVID populations, that's COVID as in crow, not COVID as in COVID, um, may have led to higher nest predation or disturbance or nest abandonment. Again, it seems unlikely that the population size of crows changed that dramatically in those between the third and the fourth year, bringing about a change in our observed population growth. So um, that seems unlikely too. How about the potential effects of increases in both red kites and buzzards? and the resulting potential competition that they both might experience. Well, this is a possibility, and it's something that we'll have to look into, but we didn't see any direct evidence for that um, during the study. Also, if you consider areas where the two species have been living side by side for quite a few years and are still increasing, this seems unlikely to be a significant issue. This leads us to the last category, which is the potential effects associated with man. By this I mean both persecution, which is the intentional killing or attempt to kill birds by shooting, poisoning or trapping, and significant indirect effects, so through an unintentional poisoning, the eating of spent lead ammunition, say, in rabbit carcasses or other game, uh, or the exposure to rodenticides during lawful pest control treatments. Statistics showing the number of raptors that are destroyed are difficult to come by, obvious for obvious reasons. Um, if your aim is to remove these species, then you're unlikely to leave them anywhere, anywhere so someone can find them. Um, and the same applies to birds that are poisoned unintentionally. It's very difficult to find these things in the landscape, and the number that we do find is perhaps only the tip of the iceberg. Recent research showed that of 110 red kite carcasses tested, poisoning was believed to have been responsible and the primary cause of death in 32. Of these, 19 were through rodenticides and 6 due to the ingestion of lead. Um, it just shows you that that's approximately a third of those birds tested. How many are there that we don't find? So, although both red kites and buzzards populations seem to be doing quite well in this particular part of the UK, we shouldn't be getting complacent. Uh, we need to ensure that the current level of protection the legal protection for these species is never reduced and that we continue in our efforts to find and stop those guilty of persecution. As part of our work, we'll also keep pushing for the replacement of lead ammunition uh, and for the continued monitoring of the potential effects of approved agrochemicals. Um, hopefully then we can 
bring about a condition where there are lots of birds of prey for all of us to enjoy. Thanks for listening. And if you'd like to read the research directly, you can find these publications on our website. And if you have any questions, you can also send those to us via the website. Thanks very much for listening. Goodbye.